Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. Welcome to another weekly study. And uh, today is, in this video, is going to be study time. I'm in chapter 21 and uh, was looking at the Facebook group and I saw a, a really good post. And I think it was Katie had actually posted a, a picture of one of the one of the tables in chapter 21. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, as soon as you see those tables and Thank you for posting. As soon as you see those tables, most people go, oh my goodness, right? And they, they take a deep breath. And do I really have to memorize that entire table? And if you've watched any of our weekly study videos or any of the chapter by chapter videos that we do here at Bodies on University, you'll know the answer to that is yes and no. And I'm not being schizophrenic. I'm just telling you that it depends on how much study time you have. Now, again, keep in mind, it's almost like study time today, right now. I want you to spend a little bit of time studying with me, which means you need to have your textbook and you need to have some paper to, to write on it and draw on. But also understand that this is part of a much more general, comprehensive study strategy. Um, the fact that we can give you tips and tricks maybe and some ideas on how to study for a little part of the textbook is, is fine, but it's part of a broader, more general study strategy. And remember, first off, you got to know how much time before you're going to take your NASM exam. Is it one month? Is it two months? Or is it three months? Uh, that's going to be the first. If you, don't, if you don't know that time frame, then for the most part, it doesn't matter what you do. But if you know you have two weeks before your exam, that you've you scheduled for, well, you better get into chapter 21 because chapter 21 is a high priority chapter. And remember, we, we know that there are certain chapters in this textbook that have either a low, moderate, or high priority when it comes to their representation, number of questions that are on the actual exam. Okay, chapter 21 is one of those chapters that NASM pulls a pretty good number of questions from. So if you only have two weeks to study, that's going to be one of the main chapters that you spend time in. Don't study chapter 19 or one of the other low priority chapters. Don't even look at it. However, if you've got one month, well, then your priority is going to be on chapter 21, which is a high priority chapter and some of the moderate priority chapters. But don't be looking at low priority chapters because you've only got one month and you need to master the material in this particular chapter. Um, and in this particular chapter, to be honest with you, uh, these tables, these tables are going to represent the vast majority of the questions and the materials that you're probably going to see on the exam. And uh, just follow along with me. Now, remember, you got your textbook. This is just paper from my, from my printer back behind me. You could use, and I've got lined paper, of course, but it's, simple, easy for me, because I also like to draw a lot when I do uh, when I do my actual studying. Lined paper I normally use just for, for memorizing, read, write, and recite over and over and over with uh, definitions. But sometimes I like to draw, use different colors, things like that. Um, so that's what I would be using. In the case of a table, it's whatever works, works for you. And so Again, chapter 21, that's kind of the introduction. It's a high priority chapter, and you've got a bunch of these tables. And so when you get to these chapters, please don't ask the question of, do I need to know or memorize the entire thing? The answer is, I don't know, because I don't know how much time you have to study for the actual exam. If the answer is, is I've got three months to study, well, you might want to spend a little bit more time, yes, kind of looking and getting to know the material, okay? Another thing to keep in mind is don't worry about whether or not you're using this stuff in the real world. I talk to students all the time about this. Well, does that really, am I really going to use this when I'm, in, when I'm training people? And the answer is, I don't know. I never use this. I've never used this, but that's not the point. The point is, is that you paid money to take their exam. Therefore, you need to learn their information. There's nothing wrong with any of this information. It's really good information. But whether or not you use it when you're training people, I don't know. Um, that's up to you. Uh, on page 
699 starts with table 21.9, phase one stabilization endurance training. Um, again, what I want to do with you, it's kind of like a little study time here, is take out your textbook, grab a piece of paper, and let me show you what you want to do, or at least I'll give you the idea of what I do and what has helped many students to learn the material. Look, um, I sound like a broken record. You need to memorize. If you're not good at memorizing for whatever reason, for whatever reason, if you're not good, I, I can't memorize it. I can't get into it. I, whatever the reason is, and we see it all the time. And trust me, I get it because it's related to your learning style or your inability to, uh, to learn the way that your brain needs to learn to get the material shoved into your short and midterm memory, okay? In general, it's repetition. In general, it's repetition. Some people don't have to do it as many times for it to get put into the short and midterm or midterm memory banks, so to speak. Other people need to do a lot of repetition and a number of other different things. But when it comes to a table like this, particularly, and I'm just going to, by the way, I'm just going to tell you and go through uh, table 21.9. I think in the Facebook post, the, the original post was for table in the phase, I think it was phase three muscular development training. So maybe I'll just do that one instead. It really doesn't matter. They, the, the basic methodology is exactly the same. Let me go ahead and, and uh, pull up my overhead for you and give you a better idea of what we're talking about. So, okay, so here you go. There is your table 21, 12 phase three muscular development training. Now, I will say this, that by the time you've gotten to this point, okay, in your studies, by the time you've gotten to, you should have already figured this out. Okay, here is the NASM stair step, right? Two, three, four, and five, and whatever. You got your, right, your OPT model. You should have already memorized all the, all the terms that go into the OPT model. Can you draw that? You need to be able to draw that out. What is phase one? You should be able to say in general what phase one, phase two, three, four, and five are. Okay. So if you look in your, if you look in your textbook, now the table gives you basically everything you're going to need. So the way I do this, let me get rid of this. So the way I normally do this is I'm, and specifically for the NASM tables, here's what I want you to do. Just briefly get a look at what they're, the information they're giving you. And then start looking at the rows and your columns, right? These are your acute variables, your sets, your reps, tempo, rest, intensity. And then you have exercise selection and then notes. Let me ask you a question. Right off the bat, right off the bat, in this table, what is the one column that you probably don't need to focus on immediately. Exactly. The notes. Okay, well, you just eliminated that. I'm not saying it's not important. What I'm telling you is that right off the bat, just make it simple for yourself. Now you only have these guys to deal with. Now ask yourself another question. This is what I want you to think about. This is what I help students to do. Now, as you're looking at it, what is the next column that is probably the least important. They're all important, but the least important, right? The exercise selection one. Don't worry about that so much. Start to get into your brain that there's going to be more important column, uh, columns here that you need to focus and look at first, okay? It's your sets, your reps, your tempo, for instance, your uh, rest, and your intensity. Does that make sense? So right off the bat, you just made it easy for you from a column standpoint. That's normally what I would do is just look, okay? And, this, and you, by the way, you're going to do this for each of the tables, phase one, two, three, four, and five. Now, let me get you back. Now ask yourself another question. On your rows, warm-up, activation, skill development, resistance training, client's choice, and cool down, you can do this one of two ways. Normally, what I would do is say, what is the single most important row that is going to be on the exam. They're all important. Warm-ups are important. Self-myofascial techniques are important. 
But which one do you think, where are they going to pull the most questions, would you think? Or priority-wise, yes, the resistance training, okay? So right off the bat, what I normally do is I would say table, whatever your table is, phase one, right off the bat, write down your resistance training and then copy it over. Did you, did you hear what I said? You got what I'm saying, right? Resistance training, now comes the memorization process. I'm simply going to look at resistance training. I'm on phase three muscular development training. Number of sets, see what I'm doing? Number of sets is going to be three, two, six. Memorize it. What is it for? I'm down here on another table, two to four. What's it for phase one? I think for phase one, it's one to three. I oh, oh, hope, hope that makes sense. If you can now memorize the resistance training part of the table, that row, for the most part, you have the highest level or the most important component of that table. Remember what I said? It's not that the rest of it is not important. No, you should memorize but you have to prioritize it. And so the first thing I would do is right off the bat is make your own table. This is one technique that you can use. The other technique is to simply literally um, take that table and then try to rewrite the entire table. Like I say, that's an option. I don't recommend that because it's way too much information to try and memorize, try and take it a piece at a time. Again, what I would do is I would take each one of these tables. And I know that I know that students in, uh, say this all the time, and you can leave it in the comments below as well and let everybody know it's what you do, is you basically take each one of these tables and you take a picture of them or whatever the case is, and you then uh, put them and study all five of them straight in a row. One of the things you can do, by the way, is look for the commonalities. And I've said this in previous videos, uh, because again, the methodology is going to be the same over and over. What is similar between phase one resistance training and all the way up to phase five? What is similar? Well, look at those commonalities. It's easy for your brain to kind of uh, put puzzle pieces together when there's some commonality. Now, I just told you that in phase one resistance training, number of sets, what was phase one? One to three. What was phase two? Two to four. What was phase three? Three to six. Now, if you memorize that, or at least you get close, guess what happens on the test? Because a test question will give you, uh, will say something to the effect of, you know, a, a client is in phase two. In the OPT model, what would be the suggested rep, rep or set or set range for this particular client for resistance training. And they're gonna give you options, one to three, two to four, three to five, uh, two to six, something. Well, you already know, or at least you've got an inkling. Well, phase two starts with two to four. So you would perhaps do two to four. Um, again, I'm just giving you an example of how you could possibly utilize the way you're memorizing this information and how it, how it would um, transfer over to a test question. Does that make sense? So here I am, again, I'm in, in the table. My high priority part of the table is the resistance training row. Memorize that first for all of the tables. And when you can do that now, now what I can do, and I'm gonna close this up. Now, what would I do? I would go back and I would, let me show you, I'll draw it, I'll write it out for you. This is what I would do. Literally, I would do phase, phase one, phase one. And after you've studied for a little bit, right, you would know phase one, what's the number of reps? What's the number of sets? Well, number of sets, I would literally be writing this out just as you're seeing me do this. Number of sets. Phase one would be uh, one to three, right? Number of reps, and I would write this down. 
and I would write what that number is. And hopefully I got it right. Well, sets, reps, of course you got rest time, right? Intensity, that's what I would write. And I would do the same thing. Now, if you're timing me, how long has this taken me to do? Think about this. This has taken me a minute, two minutes, three minutes. The, the point of what I'm doing here is showing you that it takes time to take that information, transfer it over here, but you've got to write it. When you do what I'm doing, when you're rewriting it, so number of sets for phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five, once I get this and I memorize this information because I'm doing it over and over and over again, what do I do? It's not sexy, folks, okay? It's hard work. What I do is after I've rewritten it, I'm gonna check to make sure I got it right, and then guess what I do? That's right, I get rid of that, and I do it again. Phase one, okay? Sets, you see what I just did, and that was for one row. Now, you can do that for the other rows, but what I'm trying to show you is that depending on how much time you have to study, you have to, you have to prioritize what you're doing inside of each of these, each of these tables, okay? So I hope, that, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to use the high priority rows, which is resistance training. And just so you know, and I'm not gonna go through it with you on this particular video, but do it yourself. Look at the commonalities. You're going to see a lot of NA, right? not applicable on a lot of those columns. Okay, well, that makes life really easy for you if in, in, that, in one sense, because now you don't have to memorize necessarily some data or information. It's not applicable. So is SAQ training applicable in phase one? I don't know. If it says optional, it's probably not something that is of high priority to memorize for that particular table. Okay, this is one of multiple techniques and I'm, and I'm going through this with you on this video so you understand that there are, um, there are ways that you, right? And there's a lot of you watching this, but you in particular will catch on to the memorization for, this, for, for you for this particular chapter and those particular tables. Some of you may look at this and go, that's not very helpful. Well, there's got to be another technique to help you to memorize it. Um, and there could be any number of ways to do that. Um, and I've, I've seen multiple ways that students, uh, students have for memorizing tables. This is one way to do it. Look at your table, get rid of the columns first. Some of those columns, like the notes column, that's fine to read. It may be helpful, but it's not from a memorization standpoint going to be the highest priority uh, column. So get rid of it and now focus in and hone in on, right? Those columns, those are going to be the acute variables, right? Your reps, sets, intensity, rest time, interv intervals, things like that. Then you look at the rows. What's the most, what's the most important row on those, on those tables? Well, we already know. I mean, all you got to do is ask it in the, in the Facebook group, for instance, ask somebody when uh, that passed the exam and they'll tell you resistance training. Well, in phase five or phase four, the plyometric variable is obviously going to be important. By the way, you could have figured that out because you've already read most of the textbook before you got to chapter 21, I would at least hope. The point is, is that then you would put plyometric training. You would try and memorize that row for sure in, in phase five. Then you look for the NAs. Are there a lot of NAs not applicable on a lot of those columns, right? And you would look for that in your rows and you start to make those connections. And then you get down to business. And what do I mean get down to business? Open your book, get to chapter 21. That's chapter 23. Get to chapter 21 and start looking at start looking at your tables. Phase three, muscular development training. There it is. Now get down to business and start actually writing out resistance training. Three to six, how many reps? Six to 12. Tempo, moderate. Rest, zero to 60 seconds. I know there were some folks asking this question of was it zero to 60 or was it zero to three minutes? 
Well, the table 2112 clearly says resistance training is zero to 60. Okay. Intensity. Do you, you, you do understand that one of the, one of the columns here in, ta- in uh, phase three is literally all NA. Again, this is one of the things that I want to show you because it's so important when we look at these. Uh, can you all see this? NA, NA all the way down. This column is literally irrelevant in phase three. Okay. Same with phase two, other than with your resistance, eight to 12 uh, RM, right? Your max. So the point is, is that I, what I'm trying to get you to appreciate here is that don't let the table, don't let the amount of data in the table throw you off. Please don't do that. In the, in the general study guide uh, video that we go through, I basically say memorize you know, this, but for sure, memorize resistance training. And then when you get into chapter, ch- the chapter by chapter um, videos, study reviews that we do here at BDU, I get a little bit more into it. Um, and, and I kind of let you know that there's more specificity to the tables. And then in this video, I want to get even, I want to scratch deeper in there uh, and get even more uh, specific and tell you, look at the table certain columns just don't make any sense for you to focus on. Make your own new table. And by the way, I appreciate the one, the one student that actually posted their own table. That was a lot, that was a lot of work. But I'm going to tell you right now that that student will probably get the, get the answers correct if, you know, if they get those type of questions on the, on the test, the specificity of it because that individual spent the time writing out almost the entire, the entirety of the critical data and information in these tables, um, that would be my recommendation. And they also use different colors. By the way, just as an aside, different colors, different fonts, different size markers, draw pictures, um, illustrations, things like that. Anything to help you pack that stuff into your gray matter. As always, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell. This way you know when each each of these studies comes out. Leave your comments, please let us know um, how this particular weekly study has helped you. Maybe it hasn't helped you. Help me out so I can help you out a little bit more by giving you the information and um, study techniques that you need to help pass the exam on the first go around or whatever attempt you're on, okay? So again, we were in chapter 21. These tables are critically important. If you have any questions, we are more than happy. We're here to help you. Um, As always, have a great weekend and we will see you next week. Thanks.